we grade amblyopia so grading of amblyopia is based on visual acuity so in fact best corrected visual ac acuity now how do we uh, grade it we grade it as mild moderate and severe so mild is 6 by 9 to 6 by 12 snellens acuity and moderate is 6 by 12 to 6 by 36 and anything lesser than 6 by 36 is severe all right so this is grading of amblyopia so please remember so we have 6 by 36 6 by 12 6 by 9 so anything between these is mild anything between this is moderate and anything lesser than this is severe all right now we're going to see the pathophysiology of amblyopia this is very very interesting so amblyopia is considered as a disorder of neurodevelopment so why neurodevelopment because there is something that happens prenatally and something that happens postnatally so let's see what happens prenatally so prenatally you have epigenetics right so there's a sequence in which genes are expressed and because of which you have visual system which starts developing so there is initiation of visual development so what happens you have rudimentary neural circuits which are produced now this is prenatal now what happens postnatally so postnatal is about visual experience so you get it so prenatal is about the neural circuits the physical thing that are produced and postnatally it is about the visual experience it's more about abstracting all right now so after this what happens is there is refinement of these neural circuits that have been produced prenatally and the visual system function the physiology becomes optimized and therefore you have a normal visual perception and in the early postnatal period so we are basically talking right now about postnatal no so postnatal physiology visual physiology develops and the visual perception develops so we have what is called as neural plasticity which develops in the very very early postnatal period so this makes sure that there is synergy you know what is synergy right synergy between what and what what happens prenatally that is neural development and postnatally visual experience so during critical period this is what is happening all right okay so now critical period it's both it's both advantages and it also has its cons okay both pros and cons so what are the pros and cons it's a crucial formative period yes so because there is a synergy that's happening and also it is a vulnerable period because this is neural plasticity is there in this period so there's a lot of um, you know the best potential of your visual system develops and also if something goes wrong then it can uh, everything can go wrong so you can get amblyopia all right so now when does this critical period develop so it starts at four months okay so it starts at four months and it reaches its peak at two years and kind of decreases by five years and it almost stops it comes to baseline at 12 years all right now what is the upper limit for this critical period now once we talk about the different types of amblyopia you will understand this even better so the upper limit okay they say is six years the critical period is six years for deprivation form of amblyopia and it is eight years for anisometric type of amblyopia now <clears throat> it ceases at 12 years yes but now the latest concept is you can extend it to even about 18 years okay so the critical period conventionally okay so old examiners used to say it's only six to eight years so that is why you got the six and eight but right now uh, the concept is even beyond 12 years okay so it extends even beyond 12 years to 18 years all right so now in the pathophysiology we have to admit or acknowledge the contributions of Hubel and Wesel because because of their study only we got this entire concept of critical period so what did they do they did it in monkeys so what did they do in monkeys in monkeys they um, sutured up the eyelids okay and that led to a monoocular 
visual deprivation because no light rays are going inside and only one lid they did one side they did so monocular visual deprivation so now there is a competitive disadvantage why because the brain is getting innovation only from the other side this side no yes so there's this eye so let's say this is a right eye according to my figure yeah so it is at a competitive disadvantage so what is going to happen there's a loss of excitatory synaptic connections serving the deprived eye so this is my deprived eye in the state so there is disconnection from the primary visual cortex because there is no input there and so what else is going to happen atrophy of the neurons in the lateral geniculate body and the magnitude of this atrophy and the disconnection is directly proportional to the age at which this deprivation happens so if it happens at a younger age that means at the onset of the critical period then this atrophy and every uh, system ka damage is going to be more do you understand decreased visual acuity now how do we measure generally using snellen's chart only and decreased grating acuity how do we measure usually using these tellers cards and all that no where you have gratings now decreased vernier acuity those lang pencil test and all that now decreased stereo acuity when you measure stereopsis tno test it must fly test okay so all these uh, because there is decreased stereopsis obviously because it's a disorder of binocularity development decreased contrast sensitivity you remember i already told you yes now abnormal contour interaction now how is this relevant clinically so if you show the patient a line okay let's say a snellen's line so snellen's line we have so many alphabets okay so let's say so many alphabets not asterisks like this some alphabets okay so when we ask them to read all of them one after the other that's called a line acuity yes now suppose i'm placing a i'm pointing one after the other let's say for with a uh, a rod or we put a square box around it so now this becomes single letter acuity now single letter acuity is going to be better than line acuity okay so this is what you all must have heard crowding phenomenon yes so when you isolate these optotypes they are able to read better so that is why single letter acuity is much much better so we use these kind of hotv cards which i will be talking about later for uh, you know negating this abnormal contour interaction now nasotemporal asymmetries so this is by use of okay and drums uh, we'll be able to find out so opto uh, kinetic nystagmus it's going to vary when you rotate the drum like this nasal to temporal or temporal to nasal that is left to right or right to left okay and visual acuity is better with neutral density filters all of you must have heard of this neutral density filters no usually we use it to grade the rapd now generally in a normal person visual acuity will decrease with neutral density filters but here it will increase okay so these are all the clinical features of amblyopia all right